Hi, just a quick follow-up video to that JBL Party Box 310 repair video that I just released this morning. And spoiler alert, if you want to follow through the hunt as, as I search down and find the fault, watch the video first, because this is a spoiler alert. You've been warned, okay? Because it's, it's quite interesting. So, spoiler alert over with. The fault was that, um, yeah, we had a break in the power, the soft button power switch line here so the switch is on this side and then the this goes off to the uh, circuitry over here which you can have a look at here it is here so this is the power key line coming in like this this comes over two ribbon cables plus six no less than at least six jumper links to actually get to uh the point and as well as a ferrite bead inductor which is over here like this and that goes to one side and then the other side of the switch just goes down to uh ground that's it so um yeah this is the actual signal here so I, I got to thinking like look at this right i've i've only really seen a break like this on, on like a bare board PCB where there's been an over etching problem for example happens all the time like you know common as mud really um, that's why they do electrical testing on your bare board PCBs to check that there's no breaks in the PCBs like this from over etching now of course the the rubber membrane came through here like this uh, the rubber uh, membrane keypad over here came through but look there's no damage to any of the other traces here you can see that there's maybe a slight rubbing mark on that one there but basically there's no damage to any other traces why so why is that power trace and only the power trace got this huge chunk of uh copper taken out of it and well okay um and i speculated that oh this is a party box speaker somebody you know, i was at a party somebody spilled some beer on it or whatever and you know and the beer got in here and it started to erode the trace away okay fine but usually spillage faults that you see actually you know they start to attack other traces and things and look this one right next to which technically has a little bit of a wear mark there through the solder mask that's not attacked at all why why is there a big chunk taken out of this so i'm not really buying anything to do with like rubbing on there okay some uh, rubbing from the rubber uh button could have you know in initially rubbed away the solder mask uh, just in a tiny little spot like that okay just like it maybe looks like it might have done there perhaps but then why is this one eaten away and this one is not or any of the other uh traces hmm and then it dawned on me you remember during the troubleshooting that this power trace i originally assumed would go back to the microcontroller chip on this board here that multiplexer chip which drives all the leds and everything else and the uh, key matrix i thought that would uh, it, it would just be part of that key matrix and that's one of the assumptions that led me to not checking uh, the continuity of this thing straight away because you know usually you're not going to get a, like a break in just one line like that and really you need a lot of magnification to see that and i didn't really see that unless i once i got to the end and i traced it down and really zoomed in on it because this is a really zoomed in view this is probably like 20 times 30 times or something like that it's you know it's <laughs> you can't see this with a naked eye but it wasn't connected to that matrix and that's the interesting thing so let's go back to the schematic over here okay this is the line here what is different with this line compared to all of the other traces on that board well as you saw in that video all the other traces on the board uh, go back basically to that micro uh, controller or to the I, I think it was to the ADC lines or something but basically but that board is basically powered down once you turn the power off but because this is a soft button power switch which basically okay here's our battery here okay or the external uh, 24 volt uh, power supply but they basically both end up at this point here okay and then it goes through this 47k resistor through this 27k resistor through this diode here and and then onto that power key and then you've basically got please excuse the crudity of the model a switch there <laughs> so that's the soft button power switch so this line is always powered up through either of the two mains or battery power sources through here so there's actually a voltage on this line what voltage well it's going to be like the 8.3 volt battery that we had here or it's going to be the 24 volt 
uh, one amp adapter here. So there's always voltage on that line. And aha, uh -huh, what happens when you've got volt a DC voltage on a line and any sort of chemical involved? Electrolysis. So I reckon that's what's happened here. This, this trace here permanently has, unless the battery is flat, permanently has that like eight volts on there, permanently has a DC voltage on there. So any sort of contamination here, um, like I speculated beer, other people uh, speculated that, oh, it could have been a factory wash uh, chemical residue left over. Somebody said, oh, it could have been some vomit from a party or something like that. Somebody <laughs> puked over the speaker. I'm sorry for the visual there, but you know, it happens. Somebody could have peed on the speaker. You don't know what happens at these parties, okay? So it doesn't really matter what sort of chemical, I guess, was on here, okay? But um, yeah, I reckon, Alec, because this has a permanent, vo this is the only line that has a permanent, relatively, you know, 8-ish volts or thereabouts, um, permanently on it, and these other lines uh, wouldn't, then that's why electrolysis has started and eaten away, like really cleanly, eaten away the copper there. So that that is my best guess now as to what's actually happened here. So I don't think it was um, like the rubbing of the membrane button could have, you know, gotten through the solder mask because normally the solder mask, uh, right, if, if the solder mask is intact, then, uh, you know, any sort of liquid shouldn't, in theory, get through the solder mask. But you only need a tiny pinprick in the solder mask. So you'll see like little marks like that one, right? You'll see little like, you know, you always get like little holes in your solder mask and stuff like that, right? So it happens all the time. So all you need, so it could have been a bit of the membrane rubbing. It's no coincidence that was in line with that membrane there. But then any sort of liquid would have, you know, lined up along there or something like that. And all it takes is the tiniest little bit on there, combined with some voltage on there, give it enough time, and it's going to eat away your copper. Anyway, best guess, I don't know, chemists? Leave it in the comments down below. What do you think's happening here? But that is my guess as to why just that trace and that trace alone was impacted like that and had the copper eaten away. And the other keys you can see here, right? These are just um, from ADC. That's why it says key ADC there. Once again, I've uh, got the ferrite bead. And they're basically, it's just an ADC in the uh, main processor, just measuring, uh, you know, like a voltage window uh, threshold. It's basically a window detector with an ADC. So they've got different value resistors in here to give you, um, and then going down to ground. So it knows, knows which button um, is pressed. So it's not your traditional uh, key matrix, but yeah, these are going off to inputs. You can see that key ADC1 there basically just goes straight into this microcontroller here, MLC3740, don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, it basically just goes straight into there. So essentially, like depending on the architecture of the ADC inside the chip and stuff, like there's not really much happening there. It's not like it's got that permanent eight volts from the battery or 24 volts from uh, the DC to DC converter um, directly always on that line 24 seven. So yeah, this line is electrically very different to like all the other surrounding lines that you see on here that go to the uh, switches. And somebody else mentioned, oh, it was the hard plastic and somebody was like sitting on the hard plastic, you know, sat on top of the speaker and that just rubbed on the board. But it doesn't explain why there's no damage to any of the other traces and there's almost nothing there. You know, there's a little, maybe a little smidge there. That, that is my best theory as to what has happened there. But if you've got something else, leave it in the comments down below. This is very interesting stuff. Catch you next time. Hello.